Okay. Make sure we're going. Double checking everything, guys. Make sure the room's starting to go. Okie dokie. Can you guys see me? Let's make sure we're going into all three streams. Okay. Okay, sweet. Okay, welcome guys. It's gonna be episode. How's it going, Mortar? Okay, good to hear you, Troy. Good, good, good. Hey, how's it going, Steve? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, welcome to episode. I think we are on 10, 11 now. I'm starting 10. I think it's 10, maybe 11. I know I've been doing this for a little bit. My name is Brett Briley. I'm going to be uh, demonstrating some characters and stuff uh, for today's ZBrush Live demo. Uh, you can find me at www.bbriley.com, um, where I can uh, you can find some of my work. And here in the section, some of the different stuff I've done, my about sections that I'm slowly filling uh, filling out with you know my Facebook links and YouTube and everything else. Uh, my shop where you can purchase some of my busts that I personally do, T-shirts and stickers if you guys are interested. Uh, you can find me in my art station, which is a happy art station day. Um, that's my dog in the back. Sorry, guys. You can find me at www.artstation.com forward slash spark. And I have an Instagram at instagram.com forward slash bbriley underscore art. Also, I am lucky to be in cahoots with a couple of great artists um, at Grimm. Uh, that is James Kane and Martin Verhoeven. Uh, some phenomenal talent uh talented guys you can find us at www.wearegrim.com where uh, again you can find the about uh i mean our, our work you can see all the different work that we do along with the about us about who we are so that's james and then that's martin and that's myself over here in the corner and then of course you can purchase kits that we will be bringing um so here's martin verhoeven's uh, rise up bust my aqualian my uh or james kane's it's not mine. I wish it was. Uh, <laughs> evil Lighthouse Keeper and stuff. And then a couple other things. We'll be slowly building because we're going to be coming back to Monster Palooza. So how's it going, Adib? How's it going, Christian? Hopefully you guys can see some of the stuff in chat. I kind of got that sort of figured out. So now um, you can see what everybody's kind of typing. I'm slowly getting this streaming stuff kind of figured out. So how's it going, Sukkot? So it looks like all three um, in hip-hop, bebop. Uh, how's it going? So... Um, also, if you guys do not mind signing up for our Instagram.com, we are grim. Uh, we're slowly building up, and we kind of appreciate that. We'll slowly get these things going. You can find different things from from us, and uh, that was when Martin and James went to the ZBrush Summit right here. And Martin took first, and James took third in the Sculpt Off, which was really big. So, okay, enough of that kind of stuff. So, and of course, anytime that you guys have any kind of questions, please just chop up in, uh, in the chat here. And we'll get to it. So today, uh, we're going to be going over top of um, the scans again. I've been using for these Easy Brush episodes. I've been just using uh, 3D scans from people. Uh, from this one's from 1024 again. Um, but I want to sit there and show how you can treat these as actors, like they do in the visual effects field, where they can actually just kind of build off the characters' um, facial features and stuff and create their own characters. 
Um, it's it's a great way to kind of jump ahead uh, instead of starting from a sphere. And I just want to sit there and help some people just kind of go more towards just designing, having fun, um, and rather than um, you know just not sure where they're going to go from. So uh, what I usually do from the scan, um, I will take uh, the head and then I'll make a copy. Uh, and this head was just you know just the uh, the decimated version from the scan. I would do a split to get the symmetrical side of the face, and then I will actually go ahead and um, re-project, uh, do a zebra mesh, and then re-project the details onto it, and then um, have uh, the character set so I can, as you can see, I can go up and down the levels pretty quickly, which I like to tend to, tend to do because then I can kind of move and push and kind of figure out some stuff. How's it going, Craig? How's it going, Anthony? How's it going, Nicholas? Um, so what we are going to do, I think today, and sorry, I'll show you soon, is it's Halloween time. So I figured I've seen a couple of my friends do some Halloween pumpkins kind of thing. So we're going to take this head and create a Halloween character from it. I'm thinking like a pumpkin head. And I know I like big round head type creatures and stuff like that. So I figured a pumpkin, why not? So I'm going to use some of the facial features from this character, and I'm going to try to figure it out um, on how I want to sit there and uh, make this character go. So if you have any questions, um, please chime in. Most of my brushes, again, is just my standard, my move, trim dynamic, pinch, clay, uh, in flat, and then a damn standard. I, I pretty much keep it very simple so everyone can kind of get a, a quick way, jump in, not be too overwhelmed and stuff. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? Good to see you, man. Um, so to start up, I'm just going to start pushing and pulling and just kind of try to figure out how I want the eyes. I think the eyes I want to kind of turn down and be kind of evil. And then let's go ahead and just make this head kind of big because this is the pumpkin. Let's say like this is almost like kind of like the stem and we're just going to play with some of the shape of the, the head. Um, I'm just pushing and pulling around to find some stuff. I'm kind of in a pretty low... Um, level of detail so I'm not really worried about how this is looking quite yet and I'm going to kind of probably like I said I'm if this guy's I mean this top of his cap is pretty much looks like a stem as well so I'm going to probably want to keep his eyes sort of small and I'm going to probably push some stuff. Let's go ahead and get like um, some cuts into a jack and lantern, sort of like he's um, smiling like a big old smile. So almost like a Joker, you know what I mean, Batman kind of stuff. So and if I'm going to, so let's just start slowly peeling like what would be the mouth. And I'm going to pull this down because this one I might kind of add to. Jax! Sorry, he's licking, and it's pretty annoying. I can't think. I cannot think. So, and I'm not really worried about too much right now. I'm just going to kind of just start fleshing out. If, if I'm going to use kind of like the cheekbones, um, you know, coming up from like more, think of like the, the strip of the pumpkin. So, of course, pumpkins, as most of you guys know, um, has cuts and lines. So let's go ahead and just start one of our section of our lines down that. That can kind of go in and here. And then this might be kind of the next sectional line divide. How's it going, Basim? Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the compliments, guys. And, and you guys taking the time to check this out. Let's make the ear a little bit smaller, just because we want to probably start emphasizing some of the face. And let's go ahead and go to just a little bit lower down. I'm going to raise the chest down just to deal with this right now. Because I want to probably bring the pumpkin pretty fat. So, And again, there's tons of shapes of the pumpkins. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to kind of play with this for the moment. Let's make it a little bit wider. Uh, but see, I, I, I'm just starting from a scan. It's kind of like it's in a low version right now. What I'm doing is just using this to kind of give myself a base 
uh, to play with, and I'm going to. I'm, the great thing about ZBrush is that you can actually um, work uh, depth into a character. So I was treating this like a, a traditional visual effects studio would with an actor, and like where you can build up the clay on top of the actor. But I'm actually kind of um, trying to, you know, just kind of play off of some of the facial features. I like this character. This this actor or whatever uh, quite a bit because he's kind of like this old crazy looking man he's got a lot of cool wrinkles on, in him already that i can kind of see and that allows me to um kind of build up pretty quick on what i want so, so let's kind of give him like a crazy pumpkin mouth and it kind of comes down and this is where his jawline might kind of come out a little bit and like this might just define a little bit of the bottom of the pumpkin Go ahead. So, um, Adib, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure this is from 10, um, 1024. I'm not too sure, though. I mean, it's I had it in my library of scans for, for a little bit. So, you, you, again, you just kind of might have to take a look around just on some. Yeah, let's go ahead and kind of like this is um, uh, from his eyebrows. Let's go ahead and make that kind of start to define. Maybe a little bit more of the evil. And I'm going to make him kind of like an evil pumpkin looking dude. Um, thank you, Louis. Uh, do I do have a channel that I can follow. No, I don't. I, I, I'm actually, all my emails and, uh, and stuff can be found through my website. I'm just streaming right now through the ZBrush Live. So I haven't kind of got a chance to really, you know, create... Uh, my own um, channel or anything that I've done. I'm slowly trying to. So for right now, you guys can find me through here. I'll be slowly building on this. Um, and I've been talking to the Grim guys about possibly doing some stuff as well. So because we each have our own different types of talents and abilities, and we thought we'd kind of like you know be kind of cool to do this. So okay, I'm going to kind of again start to build the rind of the pumpkin. So I'm going to go down, and I'm going to I mean, I kind of wipe that out. I'm going to use my move tool. Let's sync this. This is where the rind will come from, and then this is where it's going to start to shape the pumpkin head. I'm just putting in a little bit of details right now. I haven't quite fleshed out how I want the little B. Um, if he has kind of some of it maybe it comes down a little bit into the face where the pumpkin will kind of go uh actually we're seeing the the main ones that i do um i just you know right here the the standard move damn standard all the, i keep to i keep to most of what i'm showing you guys because i want to make sure that you know that you don't need tons of brushes you don't need tons of things to sit there and, and create you just n need your you know thoughts and ideas and just kind of like play with it um and just try not to get over complicated because uh, concepting and thinking of characters and stuff that could be hard enough so okay so i'm kind of getting the eyes so let's bury the eyes down a little bit because i might want to i'm using the move tool and I'm digging up and in and around. Kind of like, you know, the jack o' lantern as, as it would be. And I'm trying to get the shape of the eyes. I would like, kind of like if it's a cut. Uh, zombie, it's uh, bbriley.com. You can find me. Um, and at the beginning of each episode, uh, I kind of like go over top of where I'm doing, where I'm from. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and probably let's wipe out the nose. Most of the times, I was trying to tell you guys that whenever you're doing a creature, taking out some of the different features uh, of the human will make. And this is where you can't do this if this was a real actor or actor. You can't sit there and dig into their face. I don't think they would appreciate it very much. But I want to kind of make the the T, uh, uh, you know, like the, the general jack or lantern type where you have um, the inset nose and, you know, that kind of stuff. So this one will work out for that. Um, because it's like, I, I don't want to have a pumpkin nose. I'm trying to make this guy look a little more creepy 
and we're going to add teeth to this guy so that will actually help uh, so right now we're just trying to figure out some of the, the jawline um, and if you see like of like aliens the uh, the baby um, pumpkin or whatever the, her baby miss in the nose that brings in some of the skull human feature but it kind of grotesques it a little bit so um, thank you I appreciate it Yes, we want to make this guy look ugly, uh, you know. And as I play with it, I might bring in a little bit more um, elfish, uh, gremlin um, around this. As I take a look at this guy, I need to kind of, I think, start getting more of that pumpkin wide feel. Um, so he's kind of, let's go ahead and... If I do that, let me go ahead and make them a little bit thicker. So I'm just playing with shapes right now, and I'm trying to find the flow um, of how I want this to go. And teeth, certain objects, like let's say um, right now the eyes, just because he's a jack-o'-lantern, again, we're, this is something we can, we don't have to follow exactly. Um, like a jack-o'-lantern, it has to be hollow. It could be, it could be where it has something floating inside. Maybe it's an evil jack-o'-lantern where it has some eyes. As I'm figuring this out, um, so let's go ahead and just append. So I'm going to append in some eyeballs in there. So maybe as I'm trying to figure this out, I want to sit there and use those. And I'm going to do sub tool master, mirror, and just merge into one tool. Turn on the symmetry um, for these suckers. And maybe just change the shape of them just a little bit. Maybe they're a little bit more toward where they're elongated or whatever. And I don't know. Let's. Make just some weird shapes or spooky kind of you know, shapes to do with it. Okay. And these might be just a little bit too big right now, so let's shrink them down. Let's go back to working on the nose cavity. Okay, let's use this to bury, bury back in a little bit so we have some of nose cavity. Let's do like a little bit more depth in there and just echo some of the shape of the front nose here. Okay. And as you see, I'm kind of getting away from the actor. I'm using some of his facial features that are already kind of there. So like, let's say I want to kind of, you know, bring up more of like this flesh. So let's say, you know, this is his smile, but maybe he has like a double like inside. I'm thinking Joker. I'm thinking like that ripped face kind of Joker thing that he has to him. How's it going, Pro? How's it going, Yismi? Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate it. Uh, Nova, uh, I don't know. I'm just used to it. <laughs> so he's asking about the uh, mirror and weld. Um, it's whatever you get kind of used to on sometimes. It's just like it... Uh, it's just sometimes you can check out new patterns and, and some new techniques, um, but uh, I just have a tendency to sometimes. Uh, there's so many, there's so many different styles, so many different, uh, ah, so many different things that you can actually do with ZBrush. It's like I said, the deepest program ever I've ever used. So I have a tendency to kind of not go looking for the next technique and stuff. So. So, okay, he's looking a little bit better. Um, I have a base idea of what I want him to do. And I'm going to use some of these wrinkles and... Okay. Let's check the pumpkin head and... Hey, Rommel, how's it going, man? Everybody should check out Rommel's work. It's phenomenal. So, Rommel Chopra. I think I said that right, Chopra. He's got a he's got a cool name, not like not like mine. So okay, I'm going to kind of 
I want to I want to make those eyebrows kind of like they're really kind of tall and kind of pointing up to lead your eye up the face. So I'm going to emphasize those as my brows kind of turning down and use these to kind of lead your eye back up. And we got it depending on how you place the eyes and how you work them, they're going to kind of look kind of more spooky. Like if I turn them up a little bit, that's going to start helping get that. Because I want this to be evil and kind of like lead your eye straight up. So I'm going to probably cut and use that as a line to lead your eye up here. And again, I'm going to start, I'm going to flesh out some more of that pumpkin stuff. I want to kind of start separating some of these. And again, it's Halloween, so just make it creepy. And I'm going to wipe out some of that. And I'm not really liking very that just now, Lauren. Yeah, Rogue, there's tons of ways to do different things. It's sort of like every single time I ask my friends over at Mixologic, it's just like, hey, I just want one, they'll give me five. It's like, whoa, whoa, too much, too much. So um, it's very difficult to uh, <laughs> kind of like retain all that information. I don't know how a lot of those guys do it, to be quite honest. It kind of, uh, um, I think that's why I work kind of simple as well, is I'm just kind of, I have trouble keeping it all in my head. So, okay. Now I'm taking a look at the profile. I think I'm going to work on the profile just a little bit. I might make more of his head a little bit taller to help the roundness. And I think I might need to kind of go play with that shape maybe. Bring the ears. Um, I want devilish. I want kind of a little bit goblin-esque. So I'm going to take this ear and I'm going to Kind of almost like pointed out to where it's straight. It's almost kind of like a race car. Like it's coming again. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of probably go up a level. I'm gonna... So since he's moving so fast, I have a lot of lines kind of going upwards. I want to kind of maybe drag them a little bit back. Um, a little bit more. Kind of like his head's a little bit elongated. So to do that, I'm going to lead some of the details here and let's start getting some weight to the back of the head Maybe. I don't necessarily have to do full-on pumpkin I could kind of you know give you some general idea to what I, I'm thinking like he has some like he's a zombie goblin pumpkin head type of guy um, let me go ahead and save really quickly. Again, we're just having fun, just trying to think of different things. Um, hey, Amen, how's it going? Deval, um, I'm using a Cintiq 21 UX. Uh, it's like a Wacom monitor kind of thing. So I definitely love it. Um, if you're modeling with a mouse, you're kind of, it's like painting with a brick. It just cannot be done. So make sure you guys have the right tools that allows you to be an artist instead of fighting the art. So art's hard enough, really, to kind of be fighting against the tools that you use. How's it going, Serbic? Aliens from, say, Square. Aliens from Redline. I don't think I've seen Redline. Um, but I mean, it's, I'm picking up certain features. Like I was thinking the, the, the baby aliens and stuff and, um, goblin and, you know, so again, I'm, and I'm doing the, uh, some of the features. So again, this is where I can kind of start, you know, whatever you guys, everybody will see something different and inspiration will kind of come in, um, quite a bit. So let me split up some of the teeth. 
I think I'm going to widen that grin a little bit to help put in some teeth here in a second. And this is where I might kind of add some teeth holes, like, you know, might have a couple, or hell, he might even had some, but he's gotten kind of, you know, he's got kind of like some gums going. He's a gummy, old, grainy looking evil devil. Whatever. <laughs> so, it's a pumpkin alien. I mean, it's just like, um, I, I don't know. I mean, to be honestly, guys, it's like art is kind of just, it's a, it's your own interpretation. I mean, it's a lot of it. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's bullshit most of the time. You're just making up stuff until you find something you kind of like. And as long as you're happy with it or other people, and that's, that's all it needs. So, um, you know, I try to t tell people just relax a little bit. Just don't don't get so overly. Like, here's the thing, guys. If I if this turns out like crap, oh well. You know, at least I had fun sculpting for a couple hours, even though I had Red Dead Redemption waiting for me. But I still wanted to make sure that I was here for you guys today. So I can hold off, and I barely play games. So I'm gonna say I probably will continue to do some work. <laughs> so. <laughs> and then play but I, I wanted to support those guys because it looks phenomenal so okay I'm going to emphasize a little bit more of those shapes uh, even it started out as like a 2.5 painting program kind of stuff but then it kind of slowly um, dwarfed and morphed more a lot of the people started using it more for a 3d program so just think of just um, clay, digital clay. You're just sculpting digital clay. That's all. Um, and it kind of really helps. I'm going to turn on my dynamic real quick. I'm going to align to my character and I'm going to make this just, I'm going to give it a little bit more to actually see what he's looking like in perspective. And I'm kind of um, needing to change a few things. Let's bring out the ears a little bit more because I want to kind of bring these down. And let's make this a little bit more like a pumpkin to where he has more of a um, fatter base like a pumpkin would. Let's bring out the jaw a little bit. And maybe just show more of that smile. So I need to give a lower jaw just a little bit more to kind of... So I'm playing with shapes. I'm trying to find what I'm kind of having fun with, what I like, what I don't like. Uh, trying to find this. I might have to bring out this jaw. If I'm going to put teeth in there, let's bring out this jaw just a little bit more. If I do that, let me give a little bit more thickness to that jaw. Not much, though. So let's get some teeth in there. Um, you could do it to where uh, um, you bring in another object that you have. Um, you could also just bring in some some uh, spheres and just kind of you know adapt it. Um, I'm just going to pen really quickly. I'm going to show you guys some of these techniques. Um, so just a pure sphere in here. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to go to my my brush, my anatomy brush. So this is where I, I've sculpted different skulls. So, and I have teeth and a couple other things. So let's say I wanted to bring in like a full skull uh, where I can borrow the teeth um, or I could just, you know, I've done this before where you kind of just bring it in. So I have eyes, brains, other things. I'm just gonna bring in just my regular um, male skull and I'm gonna turn on symmetry and I'm just gonna kind of pull out and hold on shift and let it drag out, okay? So there's my skull, okay? Now, I have it pretty low I because I usually kind of keep them low and I'll, I'll play with them later uh, where I'll put in the detail. Uh, but if you make them too high, then it kind of screws up. Uh, it's, it's very heavy, so. I didn't hear that about that, Nova. Yes, I'm, I'm trying, Square. <laughs> How's it going, Lawrence? Um, so once you do this, uh, I'm going to 
turn on my polygroup, and as you can kind of see, I already kind of grouped a couple of these before. I'm going to regroup this, and so all I'm doing is holding down Control Shift and I'm clicking on the objects. Is right now, I want to kind of grab the teeth, uh, some of the teeth. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to. I'm holding down Control Shift and I'm just clicking on the teeth that I don't want because I want the bottom teeth. I'm going to go to polygroups and I'm just going to say Group Visible. Cl unclick that. I'm going to then reverse grabbing those objects and I'm just going to say group visible. So now I have the two teeth, even though they look different. Like I could say group visible again if the, if the color is kind of confusing to you guys. So I have the original ball that I brought in, the head, and the two different teeth. I'm going to hide the teeth and I'm just going to say group visible. Because what I'm going to do is when I click that back off, I'm going to come up to here to split, which is right in the subtools section here. And I'm just going to say group split because I want to break it up to where I have the two teeth separate and I have the skull separate because I don't need those right now. Because uh, again, all I'm trying to do is get the teeth. Okay, so I'm going to grab the bottom teeth, which is this one, hide those, and I'm going to turn up dynamic real quickly. Now they're asymmetrical. So they're not quite there. I could make them to where, um, if I wanted them symmetrical, I could just kind of turn off the symmetry, hide one side, and then I can come down to deformation, and then I could just say smart resim sim and try to as long as try to get the balance or divide half of it and do this subtool master or merge mirror. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do these things. I'm going to keep the asymmetry right now. I just want them a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to move the gizmo. Alt and move the gizmo so just so I can come here and grab it and make them a little bit larger. And let's widen them a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my scale. Let's turn the scale a little bit closer to, oops, to what I want. Okay. So I have those teeth somewhat there. And I'm just going to kind of move them into place. And I'm going to divide those up a little bit. Okay. Now, I want this guy to kind of look, like I said, goblin, zombie, whatever. Um, it, uh, hey, hey, Zen, huh? Sorry. That's not a hard one to, to pronounce. Some of you guys' names are kind of difficult. but um, And I'm going to turn off the um, symmetry again. And I'm just going to hold down Control and mask out. Because I'm going to use the Move tool to kind of sharpen these teeth up a little bit. Um, just play with them just here. Let's give some variation. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of, I'm not being very careful about what the teeth look like. I'm just kind of, you know, let's just make them kind of funky, pumpkin-esque kind of stuff. So, and just go down the line. And sometimes I move out the, the subtool. Uh, not the sub tool, I move out the gizmo. So when it, like if this is in your way, because sometimes when you try to hold down control and grab, it grabs other things, it's kind of a pain. Um, so you can just move, you know, move it uh, by holding down alt and go. So I'm just making these guys kind of, all right, thank you, Kira. <laughs> a lot easier. Okay, so we're just doing this really quickly. You can do it to where you might mask, oops, see right there, mask a couple different ones if you want. That won't affect that, because I'm trying not to grab the exact next one. I want these a little bit smaller, maybe just kind of as they go down. So I'm just pushing and pulling. And because I got the one masked next to it, it's not gonna cause any kind of issue. Then I can come to this one. Okay. So again, I'm just kind of, I'm goofing around. I'm trying to figure out what the character is going to look like. And a lot of times, even if I put in these teeth, I could change my direction entirely. I could sit there and say that's not working for me um, and just go a different direction. But you want to flesh out just enough to kind of say what is going to be right, what's not. Um, so there you go. I got them mostly sharp, so let's go ahead and just do this one a little bit. Let me move this and make it a little bit smaller.
but don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to kind of oops, um, test things out just to see what you like. Yeah, it would be cool if I did a pumpkin. Maybe in the, some of the color I can kind of do it. Okay. This one will make a little bit smaller. I don't want them to be perfect. I want them to kind of look kind of messed up. He hasn't quite brushed his teeth in a while. He's kind of kind of making my dog's teeth right now. I have a Pomeranian that was supposed to be AKA certified and he's got some of the most jacked up scary looking teeth. He's a nice dog, but his teeth ain't pretty. Okay. Can you show how to make a IMM sphere and add it as a brush button? Sorry, um, not too sure what you mean about it uh, as a. Are you talking about like a? Oh, just you mean like how I did the skulls and stuff like that? Um, there's a. If you look up uh, Joseph Drust, who does a lot of the videos for um, ZBrush, he can explain it so much better than me. Um, and it's been honestly, it's it's been a bit since I've actually <laughs> done that. So. When I made that, uh, when I made those um, brushes, uh, that was for my ZBrush competition some a while ago to share with some of the guys. So it's been some of the competitors. Um, so I don't want to go down the wrong road. Thank you, Mortar. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's there's so many things in ZBrush. I mean, it takes, uh, and there's so many different techniques and things that you can kind of learn it gets kind of crazy um so I, I kind of i can remember how to do it but then i can't remember how to do it and it's been a bit so i don't want to go yeah this is how you do it and be entirely wrong so okay so let me i'm going to kind of make this guy a little bit meaner i'm going to pull this down there we go so i'm just playing with the jaws, I mean the eyebrows, and I'm coming down, I'm fleshing out some of the detail in here. So now that I have that teeth, I can come out and mess with this a little bit. So I want to kind of make this to where, again, more pumpkin. So I'm going to kind of bring these out kind of like he's just kind of pumpkin head. And to make it a little more pumpkin, I gotta add some more of those slashes. So, kind of like he's picking up some of the rind. Yes. Stop looking. Okay, and let's dig more into the flesh, and let's kind of let's separate that. And kind of, I want to do so where it's kind of looping around. I want to kind of emphasize that smile and that craziness. So I'm going to kind of um, bring up some of the uh, certain parts of this guy to make him kind of seem kind of crazy. Because like I said, this guy's kind of like a joker. So I want to emphasize some of that smile. Maybe widen some of this inner jaw to kind of help balance. And bring in some of like the skull features that, that you might see like on the cranium. Uh, like here's his cheekbone. So to emphasize that, I want to kind of maybe loop this up and kind of come down to where you start to see more of that um, skull feel to it. And I'm going to kind of bring him a little bit. Okay. And color is going to really add to this guy. It's going to kind of, you know, I can if I go down the typical orange, um, then that's going to 
you know, make him look more like a pumpkin and stuff. But uh, how's it going, Duncan? So I probably want to bring this guy out. He's still kind of feeling a little bit. He's a jack-o'-lantern. He kind of looks like it, but I want to kind of maybe bring in more goblin-esque. And I think I need to emphasize more of the pumpkin feel to the top here. To Like he's got separate. And again, when you go down into the levels, this is where you can smooth it out and you can really manipulate very quickly where you're not messing with too much of the shapes and stuff. Okay. So now that I have some of that going, let's go ahead and bring up more of, let's bring this down. Let's give them a little bit more length, just a little bit. I want to kind of bulk them up to where he's kind of um, a little bit thicker. Because right now his neck is really thin and we're just seeing that. So I'm going to thicken that feel of it, uh, maybe a little more towards the back. What do you guys think? Maybe perspective. I'm playing with the shape. Because he's got a big ass head on him. <laughs> so I kind of, I probably want to sit there and make sure that he could hold his head up because otherwise he won't be very scary if he's barely able to hold his head up. So let's do this. So I think that's starting to help balance him a little bit. Maybe kind of bring in here a little. So a lot of outs and ins. And, okay. Hey, Irish. Can you, uh, um, Amen, can you use this time the subsurface skin texture? I don't really do the subsurface skin texture. I do the poly painting kind of stuff. I mean, it's, um, Keyshot has a great subsurface scattering in there. I know there's some within the rendering, like the wax preview kind of thing, but I haven't, again, it's something I haven't really used in a long time. I've been slowly just trying to, um, you know, paint a little bit more, but not and do a couple different techniques. But, uh, I don't think I can help you with that one. I'm going to shrink these eyes down just a little bit more. So I got the feel to them a little bit. I kind of... Um, kind of make these pumpkin separations just a little bit more in the back. So now let's kind of add a few... Actually, it makes... Maybe connect these to where it looks like it's kind of connecting to the neck of or separating and working its way around. Okay. Bring up the top of this ear a little bit more. And again, if I have to, um, oops. kind of just trying to define and play with this here a little bit to where it's kind of going and maybe a little bit thinner, bringing more of that goblin, pumpkin zombie goblin. I'm using the uh, Cintiq 21 UX, Harish. It's going, hey, how's it going, AQ? I'm going. Thank you for dropping in. I'm making a zombie pumpkin goblin thingy today. Because it's Halloween. So, so I'm just kind of having some fun. Trying to. Okay. Smile. Okay. So now that I have most of this guy kind of going um, how I like him, I'm going to finalize few of those details to kind of, you know, separate them a little bit. So I need to emphasize a little bit more of the pumpkin variation in here, which will kind of help me to kind of define a little bit 
Let's widen. I think I need to go widen this to help. And yes, I realize a lot of the stuff is kind of sort of phallic, but that's what I think a pumpkin is <laughs> as well. So let's define. And I'm going to kind of um, use that to separate. Let's just do solo. I'm going to dig, let's save, dig a little bit more into the eye socket, get a little bit more detail. I'm going to kind of define, kind of bring in some skull features to it, to where you can kind of see a little more of the depth and push back. Because I want those eyes to really kind of um, set back in there. And then I'm going to clean up my eyelid here. And you want to take a look at your creature from all different perspectives. You want to really make sure that it's working fairly well. If you're always concerned just with one viewpoint, you're not going to get a lot of good results. Okay. And I want to kind of now. I mean, I'm working where that this used to be his mouth, so it's going to start breaking down. But I could push this back just a little bit more. And when I kind of define some of where the teeth go, and I can hide. So it's almost kind of like. He's been scooped out a little bit here. He's just a fun, fun goblin creature. Yeah, <laughs> the hobgoblin. I was thinking more from like um, the alien from. Uh, the, the the baby alien, because it has the skull feature, you know, like the broken nose and stuff like that. The one that gets sucked out into space and cries. So, all right. And this is some of the detail from that, you know, still kind of creeping in from the, the mask. So let's do this. Let's start getting in some extra features. What, what comes with a pumpkin, you know what I mean? Um, of course, we need to kind of do some of the vines. Um, so we probably need to add some of those because I think that will kind of help some of the shape. I'm still wanting to... I want to kind of give this more like it's... Um, it's his eyebrows coming up here. It almost kind of has like a little bit of... detail, whatever that you can kind of see that it's, there we go. It's having trouble connecting. It wasn't looking that evil and I'm trying to get the evil into him. And you're pointing up some of the brows, pointing up some of the details, kind of making it look like, you know, that will help. And then I want to connect some heavy flesh around. And of course pumpkins aren't, you know, maybe he's got a couple kind of warts some detail that I can kind of add to this character. So I'll get into some more of the skin texture detail in a minute. But first let's add those parts because if, if you finish one section of your design and it's not quite feeling right, um, adding extra you know, parts of the story will actually flesh out certain things for you. So kind of changes the idea or changes the direction or you know that uh, you really want to kind of try out so don't just 
flesh out everything in the first part and kind of go, okay, that, that works. And then, and then when you add something, it can entirely change. So what I'm trying to do is go, well, I have an idea of the pumpkin. I've got most of his head. I've got the weight and I don't know, maybe his ears might go just a tad bit more small. So all I'm do is just moving the scale. Just scaling it down. Maybe moving it out. Okay. Better. Um, so now I need to add a few things that make him the pumpkin to really emphasize and stuff. So um, Harris, uh, I'm not too sure what you mean, how long I've been in ZBrush, like today or since I started? 2005 since I started, um, and today since one. one. I'm actually a little bit slower today. Usually I'm farther along this. I've been goofing around with this guy too much. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a while. I, I'm not that old, indeed. Not, not. <laughs> See, I've been drawing, I've been doing art professionally for about 20-something years, in the game industry for about 20 years, before that for Disney and all kind of stuff. But the uh, ZBrush didn't come about until like 2005-ish that I start, I saw it, and I got into the beta and met Paul and all those guys, and I was like, sweet! So, okay, so I got the teeth in there, and I got the eyes. Uh, let me go ahead and just make the tip of the pumpkin. I'm just going to go ahead and just add a sphere. You guys can add whatever you want. I have a tendency to just like using spheres, not really, you know, just some kind of geometry. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, that's good enough, because right now I'm just going to kind of use this to shape my pumpkin stem. So let's give it a little bit of top. Get my logo on, just going to make this off. So let's just add, and again, I'm going to probably carry with some of the, the pumpkin stem details. And then, go, jet. I'm not, not being too precise, I'm just kind of getting the idea and the shape of how I want this to be. Details can come later. Right now, I'm filling in the base layers. I want to sit there and just give some idea of the direction I want to go. A lot of people get into the super tiny details before they even have a base and don't even do concern themselves with secondary forms. All that stuff will destroy your piece. I don't care how good your tertiary details are. If your base and your secondary levels are not good, it will be a waste of time. So I usually make the uh, metaphor of um, building the roof of a house before you build the frame. So, okay, now this, I can make that just a little bit smaller. Now that I have that, I could actually just use it to kind of twist. I could pull it a little bit more, you know. And then, I, of course, I could just turn off and do asymmetry if I want, okay? I'm gonna, I like to keep things symmetrical until the final one I'm kind of playing around. And then now that I have that stem, then I can kind of bury this down a little bit more, use the clay tube to kind of bring this up, to kind of give some details to the top of the head. Okay, so I have my stem. <laughs> yeah, modern. Yeah, PlayStation One days. So, so now that I have that, as you can tell right there, that kind of helps feel a little bit to the character, kind of gives them a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add some uh, pumpkin vines. I'm just going to, again, append sphere. Okay. This time I'm just going to leave it within the head. I'm not really concerned about the sphere. I'm actually going to be going to clay tubes. And I'm going to open up my stroke menu. If you have, um, oh here, it's going to get cramped for a second. If you have your brush, within your brush is going to be surface. I'm um, sorry, not surface, uh, depth. And here's the depth. If I want to bring 
to where these things are going to come slightly out. The black line is the surface of the, the wherever the surface is, and then the dot is going to be how far it's going to be in setting. And I want to go ahead and just take the stroke tab and bring it over here. Okay, and so within the stroke right now, I have curve two of 27. Um, when I start to draw out on the object, you're going to see the, the, the tube underneath. It's kind of a buried right now. We can't really tell what's going on. Um, so my depth mask, I can actually bring that a little bit. On my snaps, though, on the strokes, uh, I have a curve, curve functions, curve modifier. Opening up those, that's going to, to change um, how this is going to work. Lock start. Lock in is wherever I start the curve and end the curve. Those two points will be locked and I can move those around. The last one could kind of give like a little bit of a bend to it when I start moving those around. Um, and size will actually change from the front of whatever. So let's say if I want the tip to be thinner than the um, uh, base, then that's what this will get. So when I, it's going to go thin to thick off of this. So let's try drawing this again. Okay. And let's go to where, let's do snap. Okay. So now I have that onto the object and I'm going to be just using this to bury and I'm moving now elastic's on. Let me close that modifier. Sorry, let's close that one. Um, the size right here, if I turn this up just a little bit, so let's say I don't want it quite as thin right there. If I turn that on and click it, it's gonna get fatter, okay? If you, you should be snapping, damn it. Making my brush a little bit larger. Now when it's blue, that's where it's on. When it goes red, it will be the size of the, the brush. So I'm just doing these quickly because I'm kind of just wanting to give just a little bit of like vines. It's almost kind of like a, his hair. Uh, I think it's just kind of like a fun little, fun little like alfalfa. Sorry, I'm showing my age. Now the, the size of my brush right now is 44. If I change this from 44 to like 21 and I come back onto it and I make it, it'll go smaller, okay? The blue is just for movement. When I'm red, then that's where it can kind of, you know, change the size. So let's say I wanted it a little bit thicker, not so quite. So I'm going to go back up to 34, maybe 40, and I'm fine with that. You see right here that how that, that tip right there has that little kind of fat flat. If I turn this, I bring this down, like click on that. As you notice, that tip went pretty much to non-existent. Okay. So let's say we do that one. Now, if I want to pick up to make this longer, you see this, when you have that in the green and you pull off and you see that little rubber band snap, that means you can pick it back up so I can make that longer. I don't necessarily want to make that one longer. I probably want to just sit there and go to where um, there's another one. Okay. Draw one over here. And let's make this one. If I want to make this a little bit longer, then I can use that and carry. I could also change, because I'm not touching that one, if I want to change this fall off to make it a little bit thicker, then I can just make that a little bit thicker by doing that. I'm sorry, I got kind of, oops. Stop paying attention to chat for a second. Some people say 3D journalist, some say master. I, I'm not a journalist, I don't write. <laughs> so no, I've, I'm not a journalist, Eamon. Um, uh, I wouldn't say my master either. I just kind of, I get to do what I like to do. 
Dang it. Okay, so there. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I see. Maybe he's talking about a generalist or a, a master, uh, or master of none kind of thing. Jack of all trades, master of none, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I would say I'm more of jack of all trades. I've, I've worn a lot of hats, to be quite honest. And if you look at my website, I've jumped into a lot of different styles from concept and all kind of stuff. Illustrator, um, it kind of, uh, you know, it was an interesting interesting uh, career because I had to adapt quite a bit on a few different times to do it. So I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. Now because I have this one, let's say I don't want it to be quite as um, fat as these other ones, I'm going to shrink my size down and I can make that one individually smaller. So again, I'm kind of like saying this allows me to kind of say some of these are bigger, some of these are smaller. So this is like one of more of the smaller tendrils. So I could even go even further and you know but that's good enough that's the, the brush let me go ahead and tool save as let me just save this sucker um but the, you could use clay tubes and a couple other ones those are the different in intensities and stuff uh and thank you i appreciate it <laughs> i doubt that um but when you guys are thinking, these are some of the different tools that I'm slowly going to kind of bring in to, to, to let you play with. I'm going to show you another technique, um, something pretty quick, just to kind of um, play with this character. He needs a leaf now. So, of course, a pumpkin leaf, the best thing I can kind of you know say to do. I'm going to append just a flat plane. Okay. And let's just go ahead and figure out what this flat plane is. Okay, and I'm going to, as you see right there, it's I'm going to it's up there. I'm going to go to geometry, dynamesh, and turn off blur, and let's just make it a 2048. This is just one technique you guys can use. Um, let me go ahead and dynamesh it. I should not have dynameshed to that degree. Can you guys still hear me? <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, I divided it way too much. Um, so let's see if this comes back to it. If it doesn't, then I'll just have to just relaunch and kind of sit there. Um, it was already kind of divided up. It was sitting at 1,000, but it should not from that one caused that much pain. So I might kind of cancel ZBrush here in a second and just start back up. I'll give it five more seconds. Five, four, three. Yeah, see, there you go, infinite. I'm not a master. I should have known this. Two, one. Close problem. Okay, let's go ahead. Thank God I just, I just, um, Save. Now the thing is, when you do that, you're able to kind of allow yourself to. Um, okay. And I'm just using my quick save to get back. Okay, right there. I'm just going to go ahead and save back onto another. Rest in pieces. So let's try this again. Okay, where was I? All right, I was gonna create a leaf. So um, I'm gonna try this again, append, just a plane. It's just solo, find the degree. Geometry, Dynamesh. This is Dynamesh to 512. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is that I'm going to look for I'm going to import in, let me do a quick search for um, a pumpkin leaf. Okay. And so I'm just going to download um, a quick pumpkin leaf. Okay. 
And once you have a pumpkin leaf, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this in. Okay, and I'm just going to say that's good enough. Something general. Okay. And all, all I'm using for this is just to give a... a sometimes when you, people are worried about sculpting, you can use... Um, well, the problem is when you do subdivide, because I'm going to be extracting mortar here in a second, and when you actually just have it to where it's all quadded, it kind of breaks up into different pixels when you do that. So I'm just trying to give you just a quick way to kind of deal with this um, quickly. Because all, all I'm using this for is just a template. Um, and when I kind of, I'm going to go to my masking tool. So when I hold down masking, I start masking. This is what I'm doing. I'm just kind of using this as a quick template. It's almost kind of like a shadow box, right? So I'm just going to kind of, Give myself just a general leaf shape. Okay. Because I'm just trying to make it look like the pumpkin leaf. Okay. Because uh, I don't know what a pumpkin leaf looks like. All right, dinner. So once I have that, and it's divided enough. And these are, again, these are some tricks that everybody can use. If you know they're having trouble getting started, or they just want to create something really quickly, I'm using the mask, and I'm going to be extracting here something in a minute. Um, Amen. There's tons of good places for anatomy. It's really hard to say which one is the best. Um, you can probably go to a good resource place like 3dsk or um, just do a search for like weightlifters and kind of take a look at you know some of what they do um, you could study some of the old masters I mean I pretty much study Michelangelo Leonardo all that kind of stuff so and of course there's a lot of great people online so all I'm doing is just giving a quick there's a leaf there's a pumpkin leaf and you can change it, it doesn't have to be exact um, I'm pretty much going to use that to do a quick quick thing here in a minute. So now that I have that extract is my next move. So up here underneath the subtool extract, um, there's different levels. Extract is thickness right now. So when I say extract and thickness, oops, yeah, for, first of all, we, you're going to do extract. i got to hide everything. I'm going to hide all. I'm not going to do, you can't do abstraction on the uh, um, solo. So I'm going to say extract. Why aren't you extracting? Hmm. The hell? Oh, that's right. One major thing, guys, is I forgot to actually do poly groups. See, it's been a while. Um, so, it was extracting itself. I just didn't separate the poly groups. By the mask, just because it's mass doesn't mean it's going to see the separate. It has to see the difference between the, the dynamesh itself. So go down and just say group masked. So now you have that separated the mask. So if I click on that, that's the bug, uh, the leaf. And now I can go to my extract, and my thickness is going to be way too much probably. So I'm going to go back to 003. Active mesh is fully unmasked. Cancel. Mask out the part you want and extract. What the hell? Hmm. Cancel. Masked. Okay, and extract is something, I guess it was just really low. Uh, that's weird. Okay, let's try this. If it's having trouble with sizing, let's go down deformation. Let's just say unify, turn off the mask and say unify. Let's see if that kind of helps. 
my extraction again. Oh. Weird. Alright. No, I don't know if the eye is... It's, I mean, it's there. It's just kind of... Here we have the thickness. So let's try this um, just to give it some thickness. Let's see if it... Let's try extracting again. Oh, whatever the hell. I can paint on it. That's weird. Hmm. I should have depth. And it's acting like I... Let's see, delete. I don't think there's anything hidden in there. Let's go back to the original one just to see if we're having some problems on... Got my thickness pretty high. Let's go down to... Display properties, double. Oh, this is wanting to be really thin. That's weird. I'm, I have not come across this before. Okay. Let's just try doing Z remesh. And we'll just continue with our merry way. Let me try. Let me do the Z remesh, and then, then I'll try. <laughs> it's weird. It's just like it because uh, uh, it should be super thick. Part of the extraction because this is a simple way to kind of you know go about this doing it. And let's see. Now I'm having problems with this piece entirely. So I might not like the fact that I just did the the plane. Okay. Let's just do this. First, you don't succeed. Start over. Okay. So I'm going to use that leaf as a template. Okay. And so again, there's different ways to do it. So I'm going to give some thickness to this leaf, however much thickness I want. And let's just turn off ghost. And so I'm going to turn on my sculptress. I'm just going to sculpt my damn way to a leaf with a thickness. First, if you don't succeed, just do it a different way. I can still use what I had before. Just set you back a little bit. And I'm going to make sure the tool's a little bit sharper. Pull this in. Actually, I meant to I meant to show that mistake, guys. So I'd give you a different option. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this shit happens all the time, guys. It's like something just doesn't work. You have to figure it out. 
thankfully you're not being recorded all the time, so it's a little bit easier to get around it. All right, so now I have a leaf. I have it kind of sculpted in my shape that I want. You could use a subtool, uh, the Sculptor's Master, to kind of get yourself an idea. So there's my leaf. Don't think it anymore. Oops. Let's make this a little bit. Okay. And then now I can go back to my um, shape. And I could even use this here to where I'm kind of moving things around if I want to kind of do the leaf. And I'm good. The reason I was trying to get as close to a leaf as possible so as I can kind of use it as a template to kind of give some detail to it. Yeah, well, that's why I was trying to do like a shadow box um, to it. So I'm just going to kind of use some of the template of the lines. Now, if you notice right here, guys, um, this I need to dynamesh this really quickly because I was actually using Sculptress. So either I could just do the dynamesh. Hopefully it doesn't crash on me. It's just dynamesh because I'm redoing it. Okay, that's good. Didn't like the initial. And then I could use, I'm just using this as a quick template to, to draw on. I could also do this where I could just paint on the object real quickly. Okay. And then turn that off and then I can use it to build some of my leaf details. Okay. Not much. I mean, it's just like, it's... Um, it's just a way to kind of give myself a quick leaf. And it doesn't have to be pretty. Um, I just want to give enough. And this is where I will make a duplicate because right now I'm having trouble working with a lot of the detail. I'm going to go down to zebra mesher, make it into a one. Okay. And then I'm going to just zebra mesh the sucker. Give it a second because I want to be able to go up and down on those levels really quickly, go down and blend those out and just make it um, add those details. When I work with so much polys, it's great if you want that fine tertiary details, but right now I don't. So I just wanted something general enough. This is uh, good enough. I'm just going to go to divide, which is control D, and I'm just going to project. And I don't have a lot of that definition, so I don't have to project too much. But now I can turn that off, and then I can go up and down blend those out. I can play with the leaf a little bit, add some bend details to it. Okay, and then go up a level and, you know, finish this out. Because I'm want i going to use this leaf for a, a few parts of it, and then I'm just going to kind of rinse and repeat. So I want to kind of make sure that this leaf, before I start placing it everywhere, let's say if I wanted to have 20 leaves, I definitely want to make this leaf a little bit nicer. I want to make sure it works because um, then I could just copy it and do the size and, you know, the stem. Okay. So there, I showed you some two techniques. One technique didn't work. I swear it does. I've done it before plenty of times, but for some reason it just did not want to today. I don't question ZBrush. I just go along with whatever it needs. So there's my symmetrical leaf, okay? I'm just gonna make a duplicate. I'm gonna delete out a few of these extra leaves that I don't need. And I just was showing you the steps. This is my duplicate leaf. I'm turn these on. Okay. So I have everything. We're going to hide the skull and hide these upper teeth. Here, what's this again? That's my stem. Okay, so I have a really large leaf and I have the original heads in here. Okay, so this is where I'm just going to scale it down. How are we doing on time? 220, wow, I'm behind. Okay, you see I had my symmetry on, so when I was doing that, I was messing it up, so you gotta be careful about that. And 
Ah, I lost my... I lost my, um... Vines. So let's see if I had it in my... Okay, so I'm just going to take this leaf. I'm just going to pull it over to here. Okay. Make sure my symmetry is off because I'm going to be manipulating this. Thanks, Nightbot. Appreciate it. Okay, and I'm just going to place some of like the, the leaf somewhere here. I'm using my move tool to kind of start to bend it a little bit, guys. Pull it down. Okay. I'm just placing it underneath there, make it a little bit larger. Let's make a duplicate. Let's throw it to the other side of the head. Make it larger. And where should we place it? Maybe. It's almost kind of like he's wearing a toupee. And place it underneath the vine where it's kind of kind of stuck. All right, good enough. So let's go back to the character. Let's just flush out a little bit of the ideas because I'm going to go into poly painting here in a second. And again, I've got most of my ideas down. I, I like some of the things that are going on. I'm not saying it's perfect. Um, I just wanted to have like a fun character to, you know. Oops. For Halloween. Never really done a pumpkin for Halloween. I've always kind of said I'm going to do those challenges and do the stuff that I never do. So this year I finally got to it. Now, if you want to add some like details like scratches or scars or whatever on them, you can, you know, the asymmetry is going to kind of be great. It's going to help. I'm going to add that line. Okay. So he's looking fairly good, I think. I'm going to move these eyes back just a little bit. A little bit more crazed. I think his teeth are kind of working. No 3D mice. No Mentis. No. <laughs> God forbid. Um, yeah, the uh, I make a joke, you know, but I'm pretty damn serious about it. It's like, Using a mouse to sculpt is like painting with a brick. It just does not work. Um, you know, be very aware that it's kind of counterintuitive. I, I use this antique, and actually, I highly recommend you sculpting on a monitor that you can actually visually see because what I touch is exactly where I'm at. Um, when you use it into a tablet, it's a little bit disjointed, but it's again a lot better. I sculpt, draw, sculpt, model with my Wacom pen. So I'm going to go up one more, um, just to add in some extra little detail. Now, I'm not going to re zoom or mesh this sucker. I'm just going to add in some details. Usually I would, if I, especially if I like the character, I'll kind of flesh it out a little bit. But I am stuck for time here to, to get to poly painting. 
So I'm going to kind of just add in a little bit of those details. I'm going to fatten up this front nose a little bit. And some of those details to the face and the eye section. Eyes are key. So you want to kind of really take a little bit of time to kind of add some extra details. Because like, you know, if I add like this little fat to the edge or, you know, if I lead this eye even further up into the face, it kind of just adds that little extra, you know. Uh, like if I want to do like a little whimsical um, turn or whatever, you know, like his crow's feet are kind of curling up. All that extra detail, because that's the expression. So, um, would you recommend using it? So, you, can you rest your hand on the pad with a pen? So only the. Well, yeah, I. I you can um, rest your hand on the pad if you want. I mean, my head is, my hand is kind of like sitting on the flat surface like this and I just, I dab like, you know, chicken eating, you know. So it's kind of like, I lay my pen down but my hand is resting on it pretty much continuously onto the, uh, the object itself, my tablet itself. Okay, so let's go. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to define a few more details. I'm giving a little bit more crow's feet that I'm kind of adding into because he's aged and old. And I'm trying to bring out a few of those details in the eye. details you can scratch scratch just put in some things that doesn't necessarily have to make sense as you guys can see I'm just tapping all over the place I'm just adding a few details here and there um, my looks like I know what I'm doing I don't just making that shit up as I go so don't be afraid this should be fun if you're not having fun doing this, then I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. <laughs> Art is fun. I'd much rather be doing this than anything. Not saying it's easy, I just said it's fun. Okay. Alright, so let me finish out some of this pumpkin. I was losing some of it towards the back here, so let me make sure that I'm, I'm going to use the in-flat to kind of and I'm going to go down a few levels to make it a little bit easier to control. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that variation of the pumpkin. Let's beef up his back neck just a little bit too. There we go. Pretty good. I think I might want to. There we go. He's looking a little bit too thick. I'm going to give a little bit of the neck muscle right here. And kind of lead my eye down around. Okay. And kind of tuck that in. Give the collarbone just a like a weird pointy collarbone. Again, I'm trying to emphasize some of the goblin feel to it. Okay, 
tool, save as. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. And this is... Um, a lot of people forget that I came from Disney, so I like to have some whimsical fun. This is where you can kind of just be creative and just do whatever, whatever you want. Okay, now that we have this, and I pretty much have most of what I want to do, I'm going to kind of play with just the shape just a little bit more. Like, do I want, like, a bigger pumpkin head? You know what I mean? Like, he's one big goblin pumpkin where his head kind of pulls up. Or do I want to sit there and kind of, you know, go a little bit more towards bottom, really emphasize some of that? Um, you know, do I want to go length in the head? No. <laughs> so, I, I don't mind just a little bit more of the top of the pumpkin head. Um, I think it works pretty well. There it goes. Um, India, I got. I was in animation. Uh, I was in the internship program and in for animation, and then it froze. And then I. That's how I got into the game industry because I. I um, was not able to fully go into the animation program, even though I was into animation because they were having a freeze at the time. So, but uh, I loved it. It was a. It was an awesome place. So. Okay, let's go back to here. Let me define out those eyes just a little bit. I want to make them a little bit more evil. Float. Games is okay, though. I can deal with games. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to alphas really quick, guys. I'm not going to use this skull, so I'm going to delete it out. Um, let's see if I want to do upper teeth real quick. I doubt it, but let's just check. Let's bring in those teeth. Again, just move it. Hmm. I don't know. See, that's really starting to kind of... I really can't emphasize the sharpness of the teeth. This looks more like a spoiled child. Kind of, that becomes a little bit too cartoony to me. I, I like the evil of that, and I like the hollow where he's just kind of relying only on his bottom teeth. So I think I'm going to keep... I'm going to fatten up his teeth a little bit, and I think I might just make one... sharp and then bring those out a little bit. I'm going to divide them and I'm going to give a little bit use my trim dynamic to give a little bit of flat pits and valleys to sharpen it and make it look like it's kind of funky. Again, it's really quick. I'm not putting in too much detail. I just want to give some added little love to it. And then I'm going to come in with my di trim dynamic, and I'm just going to add a little bit more pumpkin feel by adding some slights into this one. Because, you know, he needs a little bit. Let's do like a little dot there. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it, man. I think my Facebook is streaming too, by the way. I don't know. I, I didn't get a chance to check it out. Kyle's an awesome help at uh, Pixel Logic, with all this kind of stuff. All right. So there we go. Okay. Good enough. And I'm going to probably, let's get some asymmetry, so I'm just quickly sweeping to the right. All right, let's get to some alphas really quickly. I usually stay with my standard. I give it like a little drag, and then let's just go ahead and import. Um, well, let's take a look at... Now, let me import in 
some alphas. I'm going to probably go for some bumpy skin because pumpkins are kind of bumpy. Um, let's just add. So I could change the intensity to make them like really large up on the side, which I might kind of just, he's really pockly. And underneath, so it's kind of like where he's got like big stubbles or whatever. You could also hold down Alt to kind of change the direction of um, your stubbles, so you're going to go in or out. So I'm kind of changing that direction here and there. Okay, let's give a little bit of... Now I want to be careful about not making them too human, but just a little bit. I could always go back and then smooth. If I've had my level too much, I could always just go back down a few, and that will actually reduce um, some of the detail without taking away from too much of it. Let's go ahead and just give some scratches. I want to dig in a little bit. Not much. And since I don't want this to be kind of like too much of skin, but more of um, pumpkin, I'm going to get like a leathery type skin, maybe. Let's try the intensity. That might work just in some of these areas, just to add some a little bit of busyness. Maybe not. Take a couple swipes and just see if it's working. If it's not working, just, you know, don't force it. I go back to that bump. Just add a little bit of some pockiness to it. And I'm I'm laying out a couple times and wiping it away. That's because I'm slowly building up some of the detail. And I'm doing like a fade, which I do a lot when I'm gonna be texturing. Okay. I'm just gonna go back to my damn standard and I'm just gonna be swiping and hitting and the detail. Okay. I've got to move on. So let's hit to texturing here. Is there any questions, guys? Thank you, Sami. It looks really good now. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I'm glad. Okay. So let's texture the sucker real quickly. Actually, you know what? Before I do, before I do, okay, that's good. I want some ins and outs. I'm looking at the silhouette guys, and it was just kind of bothering me for a second. I'm gonna divide those up a little bit. Let's divide this. extra detail. Mm, not too sure what a pumpkin stem looks like, so I'm just making that crap up. Let's go ahead and add some more variations and look like it's been cut. And let's do like a little spiral for like a pumpkin spiral stem thingy. Okay. Okay, okay. So let's switch over. Thank you, Deeb. Appreciate it. Um, there's no Pokeball in Magic Kitchen, Pika Kyle. No. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go to Zebro. I don't want to do a typical orange. Um, I don't want to do just a pumpkin. Hey, this is a pumpkin. I'm a pumpkin. I'm thinking goblin. I'm thinking zombie. I've got some Joker. Joker was white. 
Um, so let's go into the kind of cools of the purples. Um, let's fill that object. Okay. okay. Now. Right now, I'm just gonna fill this object with purple. I'm gonna make sure I'm on here. I'm gonna go to my brush and I'm gonna go to my, I want some kind of divergence and I'm gonna slowly, oh, sorry. Um, what was that a question about the and I'm glad you guys can you guys read that that type in the in the stream now pretty good that's going on like right here can you guys read that pretty well if not I can make it a little bit bigger down the line um, like I said I'm still kind of getting used to some of that like making sure it works properly so I'm going to start lightening up the pumpkin because I'm going to be working towards white so I'm going to be working towards like a, a zombie flesh I think okay good sweet sorry about making that look kind of funky yeah I can make it a little bit bigger if it's if it's needed but I just want to make sure you guys were able to kind of you know it wasn't just me talking to you guys And uh, what was your question about the um, the studio? Sorry. Uh, do a search for an Adib. I can't remember where I found it, to be quite honest. I think I, I can't remember if it was at Pixel Logic or whatever. I just kind of was able to grab it a long time ago. And I, I love it. as my painting. It gives a little bit more of a blue to the rim light, which helps. Okay, so just doing some sweeps here to kind of start slowly building up my colors. Again, my top of my heads are probably going to be a little bit lighter. I want to kind of keep into the grays. I got the colors coming through. Um, I haven't worked in a studio for about five years now. I've been doing um, freelance. Um, studios can be great and they cannot be. <laughs> it's, it really depends on the team and the project you're working on, um, to be quite honest, because uh, I've worked on some serious titles that, you know, um, was a lot of hours and it was very difficult. And um, But when you have the right team with you, it kinda, you know, I've worked with a lot of talent. I've got to say I've been pretty lucky. But um, it, uh, it can be long hours. I know that the Red Dead guys just finished up some serious hours, and to do it's getting harder and harder to do all these AAA titles, um, you know, and the turnaround for like a year, and you just need a lot of people. So, and with more people comes more difficulties. So, but um, I personally, I love, I love working freelance because I'm able to jump on different projects uh, pretty easily, and um, I can concept and do quite a few different things so it's a lot more fun for me and I can choose my own time so uh, which I honestly I do more work than I ever did in the studio because um, I have a tendency once I finish one project I go into my next project and I just keep sitting at my table and just sculpting and working okay If you're starting out though, look for a smaller company where you wear a little bit more hats. Expect to work, of course, but um, I know a lot of people want to kind of start off at the highest level and it takes a long time to get there. And I've noticed that a lot of students kind of, you know, want to jump really quickly to like, oh, I just started and I've worked a year, I want to be a senior. It takes, it takes a while, guys, to be quite honest, a long time. Okay, as I'm building up the colors, I'm going to go up a little bit more to like the pinks, but I'm going to go, 
Yeah, if, if it, the more people you have, the more difficulties in management, and then things can go awry. And you have um, it just is it just is difficult for them to handle it because um, you got a lot of different personalities. And when you got a smaller team, then you can kind of see quickly how well the team is meshing. When it gets bigger, it gets a little bit more difficult to kind of work all those people together. Um, as you can see right now, that purple underlying is kind of helping give that little zombie because it's more of a cool, dead look to it. So that's what I, I wanted to build that base up. Thinking like, what would a zombie kind of look like? So... And I'm kind of trying to play off some of the, the highlights, leaving some of those pits that I've dealt with in there. And bring up a few things here. Now the neck is going to be kind of a little bit darker, so I want to be careful about putting too much of the light underneath because here is where most of my highlight is because most of the light is coming from the top. Thanks, Mortar. Appreciate it. I should pay Mortar, but I haven't yet. <laughs> I appreciate the love, man. Helps. So when you are thinking about whatever kind of characters, it, colors really make a big difference. That's why I've really not played with color too much in my career. Because it's a whole different game. Um, and there's just some people that are really good with it. I've always had problems with it because it's just... I'm not too sure what I want to do a lot of times, and I just like the sculpt. Um, but part of this was for me to get out and try a little bit more color, so I've been pushing myself. Okay, so as you can see, that alpha helps break up the, and you've seen all the different spots of the skin, it's kind of bringing in the different colors. So as I'm doing these in layers, it's blending those layers together in all different, um, it allows your eye to kind of jump around and pick up certain things. So it really kind of allows me to kind of figure out those areas that I want. It's a little bit more towards the dark in there, so I'm gonna stay away from it, but I definitely wanna highlight some of these sections here. And I'm gonna start bringing in a secondary color. Because I've been pretty much just building on the purple gray. Um, when I deal with the eyes and stuff like that, I can go to the orange. Now, um, purple is the area I'm in, so I can go to the complementary color, bring in some yellow. I don't think yellow would look kind of would make. It, I want it to be sickly, but not dead sickly. Um, I might bring in some like more teal reds um, to kind of push up some stuff. Um, because it's sort of like I'm in, the, I'm in the cool range. So if I go into more of the oranges or the teals and stuff, that's going to start kind of making a little bit more alive. Not too much. So I'm going to try to find like a good color that will kind of start getting some highlights of the skin. I'll give them a little bit of color in those different areas. And I'm going to probably blend these out here shortly, but I just want to kind of give a little bit more, figure out some of the inside of the mouth. Because so I don't know if I want to go towards where he is a live goblin, alien, pumpkin thing. Um, you know, I might kind of just um, make it to where he's kind of... Um, I guess I, I like the idea of the zombie, so I'm going to probably stick with the zombie colors. Um, but I'm probably going to go to the highlights here. So I'm going to go back to those purples because I, I put down the... But I'm going to go into the higher... So right now I'm trying to choose something like is in a value that's... I'm going into the warms. As you can see, I'm kind of going up here and towards the warm section. But I want to start bringing in that highlight to where I have the blue. So it's mixing with the purple and the, and the blue underneath it. 
So what I kind of do is just to kind of, yeah, I do, and I don't want it to make it Thanos. Um, so, no, 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 no. Sorry, he looked like he, he just wasn't very, purple's not a very intimidating color. So I'm trying to, I'm getting some of that color out, but I want to kind of, um, so I'm mix, mixing those together. And even though I blended that blue underneath, um, it's still there because I'm, I had that alpha that is knocking back the diffuse. You know, it's not one solid full color. It's kind of got that alpha that's breaking up that area. So let's go to the chin, the range. So now, since I've got a few things down, I'm going to probably start going into um, some line work. Just bringing up some of the highlights. And then once I bring those in, then I'm going to start taking a look at the surrounding pieces that go with them. So, and let's darken this down. So I'm going to go back into those purples, and I'm going to start going into the blacks. And let's go, I'm going to knock this back just a little bit. Turn off. So he kind of needs, I don't want to go full black. Thank you, Anjinka. I appreciate it. you appreciate everybody checking, taking the time to check this out. It means a lot. The, um, if you have pure black on it, it's just not going to look good. You want color. You want to have some kind of form of color that kind of blends. So don't just go straight black. Okay, so I'm kind of going more towards that zombie. When I when I put in that eyeball, that's going to kind of help. So as you can see right there, that's starting to see. Um, I'm gonna that's going to pop out, and whatever color I do in the eyes is going to really kind of help that even more. Um, so I'm going to just kind of deaden this, and it's not that I'm doing like kind of an illustration, like I'm not doing too painterly. I'm just trying to give it still some diffuse, but I'm going to kind of define out a few of those areas just to kind of push the details in the direction that I want you to look. So if I want if I want something to be pushed back, like if I don't want these to be as seen, I'm going to push those back, and as you see, those details go away because I'm going to knock them back. I don't want to go to that degree, so I'm just kind of giving some things that I'm pushing back. Like I wanted to find out that this little section where his fat is kind of coming over and he's got a couple different rolls of laugh lines and I wanted to find out a little bit more of those pumpkin separation lines I can just put a little bit of shading in this and then blend over if I want to define some of the details in the ears I can just kind of like at this lip underneath the ear I can just fake out and I'm just I'm pushing a little bit harder guys and I'm kind of lifting up so I'm not doing such an extreme. I'm actually varying my pen pressure to give me, like I'm barely pushing anything down so I can still have that color and slowly build it in. Hey, James Kane just showed up, guys. That's my one of my partners in, uh, we're partners in crime in Grimm. You guys gotta look at his work, it's phenomenal. Hence the reason I, I joined with the guy. He's a good guy, too. He's a Brit, so he's nice. And Martin Verhoeven is the other guys that uh, one of the, you should check out. Both of them make me look like I just started yesterday. So as I'm kind of building up some of the details, I put in some of those darks. So now let me go ahead and darken this down here. Darken this down here. I'm pushing back some things to go. I'm just defining certain lines and directions. And again, I might go back over top of it. And I could even do like a little fake shadow toward, you know, once this is done, 
Uh, but right now I'm keeping everything symmetrical. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a traditional, more like the traditional visual effects and how they paint. So it's sort of, it's very much like how I guess you would paint a miniature. Um, you're, you're building up on your values, you're, you're blending and allowing certain things to come forward and you're pushing back and again, you're trying to make sure that um, you're leading the viewer with the values and direction of the eyes. Like I want to make sure that I don't, if I want something to be pushed, I can, I can push that. So now I'm going to add some of the highlights that I do want to push more interest your, your eye towards. So this is where I'm going to kind of go more a little bit towards the whites and I'm going to kind of add in some of those highlight lines. And again, if you need to blend out, you could just blend out. If you hold down shift, you have Z add and, and RGB. Uh, if I don't want to reduce the level of sculpting detail, then I just turn that off. But I'm going to kind of highlight a little bit more of the eyes. And just kind of get some of that detail. Uh, I don't know if uh, James had the crash. I think it was Martin that had those two to three crashes. I don't know if... Uh, I can't remember if James had them as well. They're both very quick, so... Although Mar Martin's the fastest one of us. He's insanely fast. Oh, not good. Nice to hear. I can't remember the story. James won third place in the Sculpt Off a Hard Surface, and Martin won first place this year. And I had won second place in uh, the previous, two years previous. So now I'm just kind of detailing out. As you can see, I'm just trying to find some of those areas of interest that I want, like, you know, you might have, I want to highlight some of these little zits a little bit. Or I want to highlight some of the different turns of the flesh. And just because I didn't sculpt it doesn't mean that I can't pretend that it's there. I can't, like, you know, if I want to have some like, ripply type folds in the mouth, just because it's not there doesn't mean I can't fake it out. So I'm going to fake out like that has like some teeth to it. Fake it till you make it, man. That's all you gotta do. And just have fun. Okay. I'm gonna highlight just a little bit more of this nose bridge, because I wanna pop that. Right, and then let's kind of do the same thing down here, just like what I did up there. Just adding a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and Martin still won, mm. even though he crashed a couple times. He's got very tiny hands. He moves very fast for some reason. And actually, he, he just did a pumpkin. He showed me this morning. I think that's why I was kind of like, all right, I got to do a pumpkin. Martin was one of them. I don't know, James. James, did you do a pumpkin this year? See, now James has to do a pumpkin if two of us from Grim have done pumpkins. I think it's a must. Hey, Brendan. How's it going, man? Uh, Brendan's another talented guy that's on the ZBrush Live. You guys should check out in case you don't. There's a lot of talent. That's a great thing that you guys could always, you know, if you're interested, you could always follow people that have a different style, different thinking, and, you know. And definitely sometimes, you know, it's better to follow somebody that you get, you understand, rather than, you know, someone who might be a little bit more talented and you have no clue what the hell they're doing. Um, talent is one thing, being able to describe and make, you know, something that you can understand is another. So find the right person that speaks to you or the talent. You can still appreciate their work, but, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of you guys have, you know, sometimes are curious about learning. 
So if I make no sense, which my wife tells me I never do, and then you know find the other artist that does. Okay, he's getting there. Oh, those highlights, if you can kind of see, I was kind of picking up a few of those details. And I'm going to blend them here in a second. Because, uh, again, I'm trying to make a little bit more zombie, but i got to blend in them a little bit. Um, let's do some of these lines. And I definitely want to pick up this highlighted line. Martin's pumpkin. Yep. Okay. So let's kind of add a little bit more distress down in the chin area and some of the skin wrinkles. So I kind of want to make it look like it's really kind of folded skin. Think of um, an accordion type thing. So I'm kind of going back and forth trying to find some interesting lines to carry. Trying to make it look like it's been built up. So when skin's kind of been compressed, it doesn't compress exactly like an accordion. So I mean, it, but I'm just saying it just folds up. So you want to kind of try to look at trying to add some of that interest. Down you know, don't have everything in one place. You need to kind of lead the eye up and around and down. So if I have a highlight here, I might want to kind of try to carry some of the highlight back. And this is where, you know, sometimes you could put some design into your character, but I'm trying to, it's almost kind of like me saying, go this way, you know, go this way. I'm trying to lead your eye around the character. So by having some of those highlights and pitches or some kind of interesting things here and there, it will slowly bring your way to the back and then this is where you know you can pick up a few highlights here you know do some kind of design or or pick up some of the highlights right here that will lead your eye up these are like little visual hits and tricks that will help you on your concepting I think that looks pretty well. Okay, let's get that secondary color into it because right now I need to have a little bit more color or a little bit more of like the highlights to, to do it. So either I'm going to get color into the skin overall or into the secondary flesh bits. I need to kind of, like this might go pink or orange. So maybe. Yeah, it started as a <laughs> it started as an old man, and this is part of what I'm saying. It's like I'm borrowing some things from that guy, and I just started playing because I'm using the neck. I still have some things from the old man, um, not much, but it still kind of helped me get an idea to kind of start playing off on it. So um, let's start going a little bit more. Let's see what if we can we can go into some of the red cools, browns, and let's see. Okay, so I'm picking up a little bit of that orange. It has brown. It's still in the same value range as the, the purple and stuff, but it's adding a little bit more warmth. So let's say that this guy's a little bit more rotted inside. He's a zombie kind of stuff, so that actually can kind of work. So I'm actually kind of digging that color, and I'm going to blend it. I'm not doing it too much. I'm just kind of, kind of highlight a few things in the back. Again, if you guys want to see what I'm doing, I'm kind of just highlighting a few areas and then back to it almost kind of looks like it's glowing okay and I'm going to kind of bring in some of that brown in some of the areas and maybe even to the let's see how it looks if I go to the underneath of the eye mm, let's not keep the eye let's I can bring in some of that color in the dark here though it's almost kind of like, think of it, it's been, uh, dust has accumulated. So he's got kind of like a little bit of dust from the pumpkin field. 
zombie purple such and I again I'm bringing that in all the darks because again whatever I kind of do in one area I need to kind of make sure it's consistent throughout so you don't want to just have one little section let me go to standard and bring in I'm going to dust this up underneath here Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it, man. So by doing this now with that color, with that variation um, and that warmth, it's actually just kind of starting to kind of help bring in that pumpkin feel. Zombie still, but that one color tone and that one warmth is going to actually start changing this direction from just being like a cool, um, pure, just undead thing. I'm kind of trying to bring in a little bit more of the warmth it's got kind of like a glow. If I want to sit there and continue with that glow, I could just go up to maybe more of an orange, and then I can just bring in to where it has some of that, then the, the highlight. I'm going toward, towards the full orange, but I'm giving just a little bit of highlight that will start to, you know, bring in that warmth and do that fake. Like you can see right there, like that color in there that's just going to start doing that fake negative. Um, like there's a there's a light inside of them, even though that's kind of like the juicy flesh of them or whatever on the inside. <laughs> yes, hired. These guys helped me a lot as an artist, so I'm happy to help them if I can. And I'm glad you're digging it. Of course, you guys are always welcome to drop me a line anytime to ask me questions. I teach. Uh, on the side for you know to help out because um, it's important so it's, it's important to pass your knowledge and learn and continue learning i've learned a lot from a lot of people so i like to pay it forward andrew that's um thank you man by the way and, and this and the skull is pretty intense i, I would probably you guys got to be careful. It's sort of like when you start, don't do a tank, do a grenade. You know, start small so you can kind of work your way in and out really quickly. Skulls are pretty difficult to, to be quite uh, an anatomical um, thing. I would probably just start when you're learning because you're trying to learn the program itself along with tackling something very difficult art-wise. So think, um, pull back a little bit. Take, um, uh, take a smaller, simpler subject while you're learning the tools. Once you start getting the tech down, then that's when you start building that, you know, on the anatomy, the traditional stuff. So it's very important to kind of, because, um, you know, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. And that's what a lot of people have a tendency to do. They get up, it's sort of like, you're like, I'm going to start lifting. And you go out there and you start benching the most you've ever benched in your life. And the next day you're like, I'm never touching weights again. It's sort of like you go overboard and then you, you, you don't end up doing it because it's not fun. It's, you know, so... So I would, I would probably just suggest this. And if you want to sit there and, you know, come up with some ideas, drop me a line. I'll be happy to kind of help um, pass your portfolio to me, and I'll kind of, you know, walk you through some of the stuff. Okay, so now that I have that color going, I'm digging it. Let's get to the other color of, of the character. Let's. I mean, there's other parts to him. So let's – I want to be careful. I'm not just considering just one part to him. Where are we at? Two, three, ten. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back. Let's get to the eyes. Um, okay, as long as you're having fun, Andrew. That's the one thing I, I want you know people to understand. Have fun. Art should be fun. Um, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So I picked the highlight character. Uh, I mean, the co co color. Damn, just went blank on what the hell it was called. Um, so now I'm just going to go back and pick up some of that color. And I'm just going to highlight these eyes just a little bit floating i want to i don't want to do too much because again i'm kind of i want them there but i don't want them too there i'm going to bury them back a little bit and i could just kind of go okay let's make them really pronounced like do i want to you know they're glowing and i could do that um let's try this though. i'm gonna go to my material i'm gonna go to my toy plastic and i'm just going to paint the material on here go back rgb 
Zebro. And so I just kind of gave it a little bit more wetness in there. That, that might be good enough um, to where I just knock back. Oops. Let's try it again. I accidentally think I grabbed, I, I uh, smoothed it out. So I lost some of my detail. And I'm going to make sure I'm RGB. Stay in RGB. I'm going to go into my colors just a little bit more. That's my dog. He's like a cat. So I have a little bit more of my eyes going. I'm going to go into higher light. So I'm kind of trying to give it some creepy aspect. Kind of like some funky pumpkin eyes. No clue. Just making stuff. Yeah, no, it, it takes a bit, Andrew, so just don't don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, honestly, Brent, it's like he's just, he acts up all the damn time. Cracks me up. All right, so let me, on RGB, knock that down. I'm, gonna go, I'm back on here. I'm going to add just a little bit more highlight and a few parts. Not much. Just because I'm just detailing up a few of the areas of interest on the inside of the mouth and help with that warm feel to him. Okay. He's getting there. Yeah, I swear, James, he's right behind me. You've seen him. <laughs> uh, Benochet, I, I uh, on the on these right here, um, I just did clay tubes, and um, and did them that way. As you can see, like the little clay section, and I, I'm actually going to use some of this color that I got from the mouth, and I'm going to kind of darken them down to where they kind of start from the root. And you could actually just do some fake highlights, you know, like I got, you know, some working down, maybe even make the tip just a little bit dark so it kind of works its way around. I mean, if you want to do highlights, you know, like if you want to do like lines and highlights and you can just quickly just paint and I'm not being perfect. I'm just kind of adding some quick highlights to the line. Kind of like it's somewhere like root. I don't know. I, I don't know what a pumpkin root looks like, so I'm just kind of making shit up as I go. Good enough. Maybe not that. Okay. Now, whatever I did to the leaves, uh, these I should probably do to the leaf. So, because again, the, whatever this root is is going to be kind of. Um, Here. Now, what I should have done before I did this leaf and I, I moved it, I should have actually probably just colored in one leaf and then just, you know, but I, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm just going to kind of really quickly um, paint in some highlights of the leaf. I don't have to put much detail into it. Some of my sculpt was giving it. So I'm just trying to pick up some of the highlighted areas. Let it save. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to kind of pick that color. And I'm going to go a little bit darker. I'm going to paint in some of the shadows. And I'm going to do some fake shadows to where it sits. And maybe some on the tip. 
I'm definitely along the line. It's almost kind of like I'm going to an outline. If I've gone too extreme and I want to pick up the highlights again, I could just go back and grab that color, you know, and do it on the specific highlights or, you know, just to to bring out some of that detail if I've, you know, want to reduce it. I could just turn off, hold down shift and just reduce that blend. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit extra attention to these things because it's even though these are just a part of him, they're they shouldn't be not considered. Now, if this is after you do this to where that um, so let's go to here, this color, let's get this stem. Let's say that it's a little bit too light. You're not liking that full brown, and you want to kind of go a little bit darker then you know you're kind of like okay it's not working whatever color that you decide to go to let's say I just have I'm going a little bit darker so my dark on here is my mid-tone now and I'm going to bring up some of the highlights on this some of this area in my secondary here Sorry, I'm getting a call from Telemarker, I'm sure. I don't know how many of you guys are getting Telemarker calls. I'm getting a lot. So I won't, I won't let you hear me swear in them. And then in here, I'm going to just kind of go to where it's a little bit lighter. Maybe not that light. And then pick up that swirl. I'm not trying to be like, you know, bringing a lot of cartoon aspect to it, but I just want to kind of define it just a little bit. If let's say you're like, okay, I've done that detail, but it's still a little bit too light. Um, you want to just go ahead and grab the color. You're on this object. You could pick this color and just say color fill object. And so what that does is it keeps a lot of your details, but it allows it to go down a little bit in temperature. If you go too far, it will start to blend out your details. True, you can actually fill it, but I, I, that's where you have this level. And so I'm able to kind of drop that down a little bit to make it feel a little bit better. And then I can still go back in and darken down certain parts of it if I want. So you're not losing all your work, but you know, you're, you're able to kind of adapt it a little bit. I'm just Yeah, it's getting insane on the telemarketer call. I don't, I don't know why. All right. Now, uh, let's go back to the pumpkin head. And I'm kind of going to darken down this area to where it sits. So it's not just feeling like it's just blending right. It's It's got something to sit on, OK? So I'm going to, I'm using that color and I'm just kind of bringing a little bit of dark and fading off. Okay, how are we doing on time? 3.20, okay. Yeah, I love the, the Zebra mat caps. They work great. Okay, so now I have to do my teeth. Again, I'm going to use the color from the leaf. Now, it has actually, I don't know if you saw, I just got another call from a telemarketer. Material, it has a material on it already, which I don't want, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go to flat color. As you can see right there, the material is kicking through. And I'm just going to say fill object. Okay, so once you see it goes blank like that, you know it's good. 
I'm gonna go back to zebra, and then that's my base color on here. So make sure you turn back off. And I'm going to paint my teeth really quickly. Again, I'm not being precise, guys. I'm not really worried about exactly being right on the right part to it and it has to be this perfect line or whatever. I'm just kind of like picking up certain colors, pick up the highlights, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tie in the teeth and some of the stem. I might go back on some of the highlight of the stem to tie in that color to parts of them, to his eyes especially, maybe some of the inner of the mouth. So it now has that little yellow-orange to them. And this is where you can kind of play. Like if you, if I didn't really like this color, I could go, okay, well I gotta go back and kind of, you know, work on it a little bit more or, or let's go, oops, I picked another color. And I'm just building up on my levels. I'm highlighting a few things. That I wanna, like, just like I did in the skin, like I might want to emphasize more of the front of the tooth or like a crack or, or like, you know, just this tip of the, the tooth works. So, okay. I think I might bring a little bit more. Let's try. this okay so that color is tying into the eyes down here and leading your eye around I think it works I need to kind of just you know not go overboard do a little subtlety into it so and if you saw I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I did this quickly so I don't waste a lot of time so now I'm just kind of going back into the stem and don't be afraid just because you've drawn over it once that you can't draw over it again. I mean, it's it's part of art, kind of like trying to continuously look, tweak, and make sure it works to where you're happy. Okay. Lighten that up just a little bit. All right, I'm almost done. Again, since I did the leaves, I'm going to bring in just a little bit more of that highlight pitch. I have a couple different levels of color, so I'm not going to go overboard with it, but I'm trying to bring in some of that color to blend in. getting there now um, I think one final pass on this sucker because um, I have the color I want to probably go if you 
if you notice, like this is my highest level. I'm gonna probably go more into the reds, into the higher zone, and I'm going to probably do this bump. I want to kind of highlight this guy really like he's he's zombified. I want to highlight him almost like he's like he's since I've had this value into the eyes and a couple other things, I want to kind of make sure he's glowing a little bit more um, to kind of really pop pop him out. So he's almost ghost zombie. Very stark white. Just a little bit more to play with him. Because right now he's just feeling a little bit too... Um, purple still even though I like the purple undertones it's not exactly I was thinking almost kind of like he'd be a ghost um, more than zombie but being careful that this value is not being overtaken so either I have to go more towards the saturation of color or I have to highlight this a little bit more to make it feel like it's glowing because if this value gets higher in pitch than this, then it's going to feel like his face is glowing and his mouth is kind of the, the flesh. So it depends on what I want to do with that. That's just, that's, it's up to you when you're doing your character what you're trying to really push. And a lot of times I'm not really concerned with the back. Uh, I mean, it's it's there, but if I'm doing like a full final character, then yeah, I'll kind of concentrate a little bit in the back. But um, not so much. And let's lighten the ears just a little bit. You guys still here? Everybody leaving? Everybody left to go play Red Dead. What's going on? Thank you, dude. You're welcome. Happy Halloween to you guys, too. Okay. So, with that pitch, again, once I did that, I have to kind of go and play with this color a little bit more. So let's add a little bit more light. I'm going to add maybe a little bit more saturation. Got to be careful about too much orange. Can hear you guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to say making me suffer. You guys just go play games. PS4 is more of a loner, loner system. I got the Xbox One. I like the, I, I both. I like the, the systems. I mean, they're both awesome, but I just always find, although most games nowadays are just you play online against people. So I'm highlighting. Um, I'm bringing up the value a little bit more. To help that glow, um, and I definitely need to go a little bit more towards. Let's see if I go towards an orange. I'm at 29 in my value, which is that's the big thing. So if I add more of that orange color, as you can see right there, that kind of really uh, you can add color, change the value, and then you can kind of add quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's actually yeah, good idea, Andrew. You can always just add people. So right here, if I go to pure red, high red, value, if I start to bring in that red, that changes him. Now he's a crazy clown that's about to die. If I go a little bit more towards orange, then I have more of that pumpkin feel with getting to, which I, I don't mind, actually, I kind of dig that. So I've got to, I've got to find a color that I want to kind of bring in, maybe not to that degree. It's a little 
to yellow. So you want to find the right color, the right temperature, and to kind of bring in a little bit of that brown. Okay. So you see that orange, like how much it was kind of light. You guys like it where it's more orange? It's almost like he's on fire. Or a little bit too much. Let's go ahead. I'm going to add some of it back in because I do like a little bit of it, but not too much. So I've got to find the right balance. Yeah, orange equals pumpkin. I mean, that's the thing. I want to have. I want to have a subtle hint to pumpkin by bringing in some of this color. People are going to associate with pumpkin a little bit more. So maybe bringing in some of the orange will help tie some of the warmth. So I don't think that's a bad idea. And then. Any more in the eyes that helps and because I have this color guys that are just like separation I, I, I want to make sure I blend in certain areas it's almost kind of like I'm dusting um, like when you get in the crevices of certain things there's gonna be some of that color so don't be afraid to kind of place it in certain places or blend And you always got undo in case you've overstepped it. I don't know about the red. I mean, it kind of... The problem is like... One, I'm not a big fan of the... Red. I think I need to bring in some kind of under eye... To kind of help just a little bit so let's try let's go back to those blues because i have that orange so if i darken this up a little bit mm. and the orange red spray bottle Actually, that's the wife's dog. I won't claim them. I think the thing is, well, by doing this, Jax, you're all right. Go lay down, buddy. I've got to be careful about how much I put this in because right now he's kind of feeling... Like if I add red, like you were, you were thinking, it just kind of... He's starting to get a little bit pocky and, and he's going away from kind of like that cold ghost like feel so that's the one thing just like the color can really change the look of it i sort of i think even having that blue in there it's pulling away from the face to where as you can see right there that because that is white that is kind of making him feel like he's glowing a little bit um i think i'm also going to go to my material and to my toy plastic and, and i'm on my teeth and i'm just going to say color object so his teeth are a little bit kind of on the wet I, you know I, I want to sit there and have it a little bit wet on the um, on the face but of course I can't do that because it's uh, it won't work um, it'll be kind of like separated like you can't have two materials I can't have my um, Illustrated paint and like a different type of tone onto it just doesn't work unfortunately So I'm just gonna go back I have my 
like a darker color and I'm just going to add a little bit final details because I'm pretty much done guys I'm just kind of I've been tweaking a little bit and I'm kind of losing them here and there so I'm just kind of trying to pull them back um, so I'm going to kind of detail up a few of those that I kind of lost because I've been playing around with a lot of the different variations. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow underneath this lip. To push this back, make it feel like it's a little bit more realistic. And then definitely have some shadow into some of these areas right here. On here, now that I've got an asymmetry, I'm just going to add a little bit of fake shadow, subtle, underneath where the leaf is. And that is... Because it's, it, if I don't have a shadow, it's going to feel like it's floating. Okay, So I need to sit there and kind of set it to place on the skull. Give it some ambient occlusion, make it feel like it's part of it. So don't forget about that. Okay. Okay. And need one more high pass here and there. Because I lost it a little bit. And I think I am close to being done. I'll never be done. I'm just joking. I'm going to go back to this guy after you guys leave. It's never ending. You find uh, layer. Um, I have a tendency not to use the layers too much, especially when I'm dealing with poly paint. I've had some issues with it. You're talking about these layers over here, right? Yeah, that is true. It's never, never finished. Always just back and forth on it. How's, how's your guy coming, Brennan? I haven't checked it out in a little bit. you were starting the details or you were starting the skin texture yeah no infinite I, I kind of have a tendency I don't play with that that much because it's like I've had a couple of crashes on it and just kind of once I have some issues once I do my it's user error it's my fault but once I have a tendency to do it then I have it you know I was like oh I screwed up there then I try to I stay away from it <laughs> so because I'm afraid I'm afraid to touch it again um, but it, it's it, when I'm dealing with skin and, and tone, I'm, I, I like to build up subtly. So how I do it, I don't think I really need a, a layer. Um, I do I have used layers, and I will use layers more for sculpting. So okay. All right. I'm going to do one last pass. I'm going to grab an alpha that I want to blend um, because I need to tie in a few things. So I'm going to grab just. I'm going to go back to the alpha, uh, the elephant alpha, like one of them, and I'm just going to use those to kind of pull in. Do a consistently. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give it a little bit of roughness over top. Now, if you see it like right here, then you're going to see what the skin tone does. If I hold down black, you'll actually see it. So I'm adding a little bit of detail towards it, um, and I'm just overall lightening it up by adding some skin variation because I want to make it look a little bit rough. 
Yeah, the skin details are, are fun. And for sure, drop me a line on that anytime. It's a it's a bear. And my main thing is for this is to kind of give some better variation to the, the the bottom here. I don't have I don't have a lot of detail into the skin, so I need to kind of give it something a little bit more interest. So I'm trying to light it while still having some of those directional lines. Because I did pretty much nothing in the back here, so it almost looks like he's bruised. Which is good. That's the part of the buildup. Okay. I think he's pretty much done. Uh, on these on these teeth, um, they're a little bit too dark because I put that material on them. So again, if I want to lighten this up, I could pick a high color. Go in here to draw color. I mean, and I could just say fill now if that's too light again or if I want a different color just go fill and change the amount there we go and you still could kind of like okay I need to I'd like this a little bit more. Because whenever you do a material, guys, over top of it, the material will blend with your, your poly paint. So I didn't have the zebra material was actually highlighting that up and making it a lot lighter than I was expecting. So when I put that with the, the toy plastic, I lost a lot of my subtle details that I was putting into the teeth. So I just have to pick those back up because I like that material. I want to keep it with it, but I just need to go back in and give some of those. So now we can see the teeth a little bit more. Let's turn on dynamic, pose, draw, 35. Okay. To say this, do I need to pose them, guys? Or you, you, uh, do you like me posing them? Do you think I should? Oh, why hell? No. I'll record. I'll pose them real quick. So I saved it. Here, render. No render for you. Uh, I will do some of the renders here pretty soon. I'm just going to see about posing this guy real quickly. Because it doesn't take me that long. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Gonna flip. Okay, just blending out the two. Got to make sure my symmetry is off. Just quizzing. Maybe it's just kind of like, eh, what do I get for Halloween? What's what kind of candy do I get? I don't know. These daydreaming and bottles, Reese's pieces and stuff. I have a kid, so that's he's getting them for me. So, and you can even manipulate it just a little bit. Raise the eye. You could also, uh, guys, that if you if you need to sit there and like, let's say, you want to pose them to where he kind of bends down like this more. Like you could change the pose. You can actually move him around. You could do quite a bit. So um, depends on how you want him to be. I think that's it's fairly good. If he poses sub pool. <laughs> it's okay, I don't mind. So there we go. So he's kind of like, eh. He's daydreaming. Um, renders, guys, you know, I don't really render in here. I render in a key shot. 
Um, that's where you just go to external render and you have the key shot in here. If you're going to do your render properties, uh, you do have the subsurface scattering, which you can turn on here. You can have some slight fog, a depth cue. You can set those up, a wax preview if you want to add a little bit of those. The rendering passes. Um, once I do render the sucker, you can actually you know have all the renders show up into here if you need to. Your shadow, you can change the strength on it. You can change the rays, which is the directional. Um, subsurface scattering, all those things will have the different rays and set. So if you're like, okay, I wanna, I wanna sit there and render this guy out. I'm not going to my external renderer. I didn't turn that off. So my, I'm in ZBrush right here. So if I just do, yeah. This would be like a cool, you know, kid's picture. And so right there, if you see, um, my shadow is really heavy. So if you go to render into, and then there's my different passes. There's my depth, image occlusion, all that kind of stuff. My shadow, I'm going to turn that down. Uh, my subsurface scattering should, not too sure why. I have it selected. Let's try it again. And once you have those all kind of rendered, it'll be a little bit quicker to where you can, um, it should go a little bit quicker the next time you do it. Okay, I actually turned off my, <laughs> I went too harsh on my shadow. Son of a... <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while since I did it. Shadow strength, let's do 0.5. Instead of, instead of messing with two tabs or two sliders, just mess with one, find the error, and go slowly. I'm actually losing my... Um, oh, well, I give up. Oh, 30 degree angle? Okay. All right, let's see. 30 degree angle to what? Floor strength, global shadow strength. On the shadow settings. Okay, James is saying 30 degree angle. Let's see. What's wrong with my uh, subsurface scattering? Should we get anything in a wax preview? I should actually have something in the wax preview. Preview wax. It's been a while. Let's try this gun. <laughs> I could to like he's been smacked in the side of the head. Some pumpkin seeds. So Charles was thinking of pumpkin seeds. Let's see. I was gonna do a pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seed. Oops. Let's make them pulled. Like he's been hit. <laughs> Mesh brains. We can mix it all. We can do it all. No, it's fun stuff. <laughs> Actually, I should have probably... Where were you before, Charles? I could have just had the pumpkin head like it was cut off and like he was kind of scooped out brains and stuff. I could have gone a lot more horrid. A lot more scary. Next time. And I suck at rendering. I'll get some lessons from James. I'll, I'll ask him. I like how do, how the how the hell do you render? And James can tell me he he's a better renderer than I am by far. So all I'm doing right now is just doing some snapshots. I'm doing Control S, and that allows you to kind of do um, some quick snaps. But I think that is my pumpkin ghoul head for Halloween. Happy Halloween, guys! Yes. <laughs> 
I'm going to be talking to you all day, James. So thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate you guys showing up. If you have any more questions, just drop me a line anytime at bbriley at bbriley.com or you can find us at Grimm. Uh, we are Grimm.com. Um, please visit our sites. Please like if you and uh, if you don't mind and share. Uh, definitely appreciate it. If you have any further questions, just drop me a line anytime. Thanks for joining me, guys, and uh, I'll let you guys get to your day. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to play Red Dead until later, so I've got some work to do. But uh, thanks for joining, guys. I totally appreciate it. Happy Halloween.